Are you tired of looking for that note that you started last week about the thing you were reading that you wanted to share with that friend, but now you can't find it? Do you wish that you could recall that information easier and in one place? Today you're in store. Welcome to A Slice of Haley, where I share all manner of things from planning to productivity, all in hopes to help you be the best version of yourself day after day. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you want to stay up to date, make sure to hit that notification bell. No matter whether you're going to school or adulting, everybody needs to make notes. Maybe it was a quote you saw on Instagram that inspired you or a section from a book that you're reading that resonates with your core. I bet you've scribbled it down on a post-it put that post-it somewhere, and now for the life of you, you can't remember where it is or truthfully what it said. Today with you, I'll be sharing a few note-taking methods that I'm using that you can use to help you retain more information and make it easier to recall that information. The outline method was most commonly used in essay writing in school. You have your main points, your sub points, and then some supporting information or thoughts to back up whatever your main sub point was. I find it best to use this method when I have to formulate my thoughts and I'm using it for writing something. Whether that's writing an email or a blog post or something for work, that's where I would use the outline method. I also commonly use the outline method when creating the scripts for these videos. Did you ever use this method when writing essays? Leave a comment below. Mind mapping is where you take your main idea and you, for lack of a better term, brain dump or word barf everything down on that piece of paper. You can do this in other digital note-taking apps, but I find mind mapping is best done in either paper method or using an app called draw.io. This method works best when you are planning a project. Think of setting up a new website or a store or creating a YouTube channel. Mind mapping is great to brain dump all that information out with the different spider connections from all the different points and offshoots. Cornell Notes. The Cornell Notes method has been used by many university students and students all across the world. It is a system that is used for taking, organizing, and reviewing your notes. This method was devised by Professor Walter Polk of Cornell University in the 1940s. This method can easily be done on paper or in a tool like Notion. All you need to do is separate your paper into four different sections, or three depending on whether you'd like to have a title section. So the top is a title, the left margin is your key areas, your questions, your terms, the right side is the actual notes that you've taken on the subject, and the bottom section is for your summary. This method I have found the most useful because it makes me have to recall and reflect on the information I just consumed in that article, book, podcast. It's one thing to listen to something, but it's another to actively listen and to consume the content with intention. Have you ever heard of the Cornell method? Have you ever used it? I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. Now let's dive into Notion and see just how these three methods work. Here we are inside my knowledge bank. This is the area that I've created to house all of my notes, whether it be from a book, from a podcast, from a TV show, from a Medium article, wherever I am finding content, it all lives here in this main database. You can see that this database has several different columns, type, status, source, the physical title or name of the item, it's related to my key tag, so I do have a master tag database. Clear summary. Now, as you can see, I haven't used this uh, column too, too much, uh, but it is still something that I'm planning to develop and implement more. The URL to the article source, or if it's a book, there's obviously no URL. Now, I have a few other columns that are re related. These are all part of my resource database or my resource hub. Words and wisdom, this I actually pulled from one of Marie Poland's videos. Uh, basically, it's any place I would keep a specific quote or something I wanted to just log as a specific jot note. I have a relation to my dailies, which link back to my bullet journal. I have a column here for remind me, so in the event that I haven't read an article 
or I need to come back to it, I can set a date here for myself. I have it related to any goals or big projects that I'm working on. So this one here is a guide about sewing. So I've added it to sew my own clothes. Uh, this column here is current projects or current things that I'm working on. So for the rest of the year, my goal is to read six books. So as you can see, I've got two books ongoing right now. The date when the item was last edited, uh, it, basically when did I take an action on it. If there's a specific app I'm using to consume the content. So this is more, it comes into play with things that are not online. So Kobo, Audible, Google Play, Pocket Cast, those are where I either read books, listen to books, or listen to podcasts. And then obviously I have one as YouTube, but I have another YouTube option in one of the further uh, beginning columns. So I'm not sure if I will use this specific YouTube uh, option there. I do have a category column. It's not something I use all that much, uh, but it is there if you want to have a specific category. I have related to authors, so I have created another database, it's like database inception of authors or people that I'm looking at, content creators, big minds, that sort of thing. Here is one of the articles that I recently read. It was about minimalism and personal finance. It was an article that I found on Medium. It says in progress because that was the status I had left, last left it at. The category is money. The key tags are money and minimalism, a summary, a link to the article, and who is the author. Now in this section here, I have used the Cornell method. So I took notes from the actual article, then I made key points here on the right, sorry, on the left, and then I have a, a summary here at the bottom. So earlier in the video, I had said that the Cornell method could be three or four parts. Uh, the section that I've taken out was the title because I'm doing this within Notion, so the title is already preset within the page. But again, if you are using it on paper, you could have four different sections. So the title as one at the top, key points on the left, or search terms or definitions, things that you need to look up, the actual notes that you took, and the summary. One of the reasons why I really like this method is because it makes you reflect on what you're reading. Uh, so first you're taking the notes and then you go and do the key points afterwards. So do keep that in mind. The final section that I'm gonna talk about is some templates that I've created. A lot of you have asked me privately about sharing a template. So I've got some for you. The template link will be in the description. I have a link to the knowledge base. It has the article about minimalism and finance, just to get you started. These uh, relational databases obviously won't be in yours unless you've already set them up, or you can create a relation to something that you have already in your Notion. I also have three examples of the note-taking options. This is the outline method, point one, subpoints, proof, and that would be carried all the way down. This is an example of a mind map or how you can create a mind map in Notion. Uh, so the main idea would be launch online store, and then the spider legs that would go out would be setup, requirements, content, test and launch. And then from there, there would be more spidering out. So emails, you can use a toggle to add more. You can have it just as bullets. You could have it as a lists. So it does allow you to have more options within a mind map, but it's not drawn out as a mind map. And the final template I have is the Cornell note template. Here I have it as the date. This is relative. So to change that, you can just set it as full date. So if you were to create another one of this, it would have that date instead. The article title, article name, key points, notes, and summary. This is something you can implement in your knowledge base or just have as a standalone for any note taking, for example, if you're in school or for meetings at work. I do hope that these templates are gonna help you. Again, the links are in the description. There you have it. That is how I'm currently consuming content and taking notes to retain that information. As I've mentioned all along the way, we all have our own ways and methods to do things. When those are not working, we tend to go to look for an alternative. This is just how I do it. I hope these methods can help you take better notes and recall the information easier. I go through dozens of notebooks each year and write down everything that occurs to me each day. 
An idea not written down is an idea lost. When inspiration calls, you've got to capture it. Richard Branson. Don't lose your good ideas. You never know when one's going to spark inspiration. If you found this video helpful, again, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, happy note-taking.